Hey guys, Jared Beckwith here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you guys an EEG of a patient who's in a burst suppression pattern, and this happened after they were found down for about 10 to 20 minutes after EMS was able to arrive, revive them, and bring them to the hospital. In the hospital, the patient is having these weird twitching movements called myoclonus, so they hooked them up to EEG, and they want to see what the brain waves are looking like. So if we look into the EEG now, at the beginning of the record, we can see it's mostly flat or what I would call suppressed along with a little slight amount of muscle activity, but it's mostly just that suppressed flat pattern. And then you have a little burst of activity here. And then it goes back to the suppressed pattern, the almost flat with a little bit of muscle and a burst again. So a burst suppression essentially is a pattern where there's pretty much flat line of a record or very slow waves, you know, one, two, three waves per second, very flat, very slow in the delta range. And then you have a burst of fast activity. So this happens after a patient is found down let's say they have an anoxic brain injury. This specific patient had COPD, so chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. So maybe they had breathing problems. Maybe they weren't able to get enough clear oxygenated blood to their brain. And maybe that led to brain cell death, or maybe it was heart attack related or something. We don't have perfect history, but it's known that if the brain isn't getting good oxygenated blood constantly, your brain cells are gonna die. And when you get hooked up to EEG monitoring after an anoxic brain injury, you could see this burst suppression pattern. Now that's something you don't wanna see. This is one of the worst patterns to have. And looks like their EKG electrode is off at this point, which happens in the ICU. A lot of, lot of tests getting done, a lot of things getting done. And if we scroll through the record, it's essentially going to be this burst suppression pattern over and over again, uh, cycling from completely almost flat to a short burst of activity. And during this activity in the history, it said that the patient had, would have a little bit of a twitch in their face with every burst of activity. Now, if you want to, I guess, localize these bursts, they're more prominent in the frontal regions, but it's essentially the whole brain. And well, what do the, what does the doctor do in a situation like this? This is one of the worst EEG patterns to see. And unfortunately, I'm not sure if there's anything the doctor can do for a patient like this because if you're in a burst suppression pattern and there's absolutely no sedation, it's a very poor prognosis. They have a very bad predicted outcome because of all the brain cells that died. Uh, as I know, there's no way to revive brain cells and bring the brain back to life. So I don't think there's anything the doctor would have been able to do for this patient, unfortunately. But this is a type of case that we see a lot in the hospital. People get taken to the ICU after being found down. And if they're down for too long without being revived with CPR, you see this inevitable brain cell death and this burst suppression pattern, which continues on and on. And the doctor in the history said that the bursts happen at least 20 times throughout the record. And if you want a quick way to see exactly how many bursts and the frequency of the bursts, you can pull up what is called the trends tab. And you can see each of these red lines is one of the bursts. And each moment in between is the suppressed part. And if we zoom in just a little bit so we can see five minutes, here is the frequency. It is essentially all blue, dark, nothing happening except at the bottom, which is like one or two hertz, one or two waves per second. 
flatline, 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 burst. Suppression, 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 burst. Suppression, 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 burst. And this can also be seen in the average amplitude calculator. So the red line is the right side, the blue line is the left side, and they essentially overlap, but as you can see, it starts out at around an average of 10 microvolts, then it shoots all the way up to 100, and then it goes back down to 10. And then it goes all the way up to 100, then all the way back down to 10. There would be no other reason for such a sharp increase and decrease in average amplitude other than a burst suppression pattern. Now, what do these look like? These look like stripes. So on quantitative EEG on the trends, the typical pattern you'll see in a burst suppression are these stripes over and over again. Very important to know. And as a doctor, they can see how frequent are the bursts, how long do, do these uh, periods of suppression last. You can get a lot of valuable information from looking at the trends. Now, if we keep on scrolling, we're almost at the end of the record. We won't see anything anything other than what we've already seen already just a lot of flat line and then a period of quick burst and then back to flat line unfortunately like i said before there's nothing we can do for this patient except i guess pray for them and i wish there was a way to help people like this maybe one day in the future there will be a way to revive brain activity better but as of now we can't yet. And this right here, this at T1 is called an electrode pop. Maybe the patient is turning their head a little bit or getting moved around. So this is just an artifact. This isn't real brain activity. And, but here's the last burst. And we are complete with the review of this patient who was found down, they had CP, COPD, history of seizures, and now they're in a burst suppression with myoclonus. The little twitches with each burst. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this EEG record review. If you're unfamiliar with the pattern of burst suppression, hopefully you learned a little bit about it today. I, I hope to be helpful. That's why I make these videos. If you were helped out or you liked the video, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all, my friends, on the next video.